Ayan. Welcome to my house where I'm in the word of God and I'm sharing my time with you uh, to tell you this is how I function. All right, we are in Numbers chapter 25. Good morning, John. We are in Numbers chapter 25. And this is a continuation of the story of the children of, children of Israel after the contact of Balaam and ba Balak. So today we're going to go into some very, very interesting things. God is not holding back the truth. And we need to know it to see whether or not we measure uh, where they were to where we are. Let me ask you a question. I heard a very good teacher say this. How, how far have you grown? If you were to take an inventory of yourself and understand standing the knowledge of God, how far have you grown? Are you still repeating the same thing that's been passed along to you? Or do you actually know the richness of God's word well enough to say, I'm growing in the word and I'm, I'm more hungry because I realize I don't know enough? Or are you just maintaining? Like a line graph, this man was saying, and I thought about it in, in the educational system. The last time I checked the line graph after 400 years of educating, how far have we grown? And the line did this right here. And sometimes it'll dip and they get back there. Then it may go up like a a decimal point so small until you can't really uh, see the change. Uh, are we doing like this? Like business. We start off here and it grows over time. And you can see the growth and my hand is going up. Or are you just, you still don't know any more about God than the first time you said, all I know is I, I don't want to go to hell. So therefore, all I know is that's that much. But if you had a decent conversation in the word of God, how long could you hold it before it becomes defensive or, or before you get upset? And then you just walk away and, and then you can't complete it unless you just can control the subject by sticking with one thing. We are supposed to be growing in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's not an indictment. That's just where we ought to be. It's just the truth. And today, God is going to tell the truth. And he's not afraid to tell it, and he's going to keep his word. All right, let's get into, uh, before we get into um, Numbers chapter 25. We ask God, Father, we thank you this morning for everybody that's joining us and, and the people that bless everybody to love and to want to know more of your word today. As they stop by my house to find out what's going on with Brenda, I am in the face of God to learn more about how he thinks. And Father, I thank you for forgiving me of my sins and then teaching me daily how to forgive those who have wronged me. And I forever give your name the praise because of who you are to share yourself with me to allow me to see how you think your agenda, your diary, your word, and help me to execute the things that I find about myself that I need to change. And thank you for the angels that are encamped around this place. And uh, let's get in the word, amen. So if you are here today, I pray that, that you are given the opportunity to come into the house of God and let's look and sit down and look around and look at the pictures and ask questions. You know, what is this? What is that? And let's just get to know God and how comfortable it is to be in his presence while he tells the truth. All right, verse one. Uh, this is um, chapter 24 ends and I like to kind of go back to Go back one chapter and see. And the last thing that was here in chapter four, that Balaam, Balaam and Balak departed. 
well, they departed as far as physically. But I think they were still, according to better teachers than me, uh, there was some communication going on because we're going to see the results of what had been transpired between those two. Because here's the king in charge. And something is going under, something is going on in his in his uh, kingdom. And it's authorized. And he's quite uh, aware of what's happening. All right, because in this place is where the children of Israel have been encamped in their tents. But something happened, and let's open up the screen and action. While the Israelites were camped in Achaia Grove or the Shittim area where those trees were, some of the men defiled themselves by having sexual relationship with the local Moabite women. These guys that, let's picture these guys, these are well-known guys, uh, leaders of Israel. And here's Moab coming in with the prettiest prostitutes. I say prostitute. I say some women that knows how to be, escort them. Hi, can I help you? You know, just not just a regular old girl. This was something that captivated the, the attention of the men of God. And they brought them down. Some women just got it. They, they, they know they got it. And you know they got it. And all the other women know they got it. So these Moabite women. Under the leadership of Balak. And Balak had sought with Balaam many ways of how to curse these people. And God told him, you can't. It's impossible. But these people decided to come out of the insurance of God, the fence of God, themselves. And that's the only way you can get a believer. He has to come out. God's protection is all over anybody that's under his jurisdiction. But you got a right to come out. And let's see what happened. They were having sexual relationship with the local Moabite women. These women invited them to attend sacrifices to their gods, lowercase g. So the Israelites feasted with them and worshipped the God of Moab. How in the world have you left all of what you know for a moment of pleasure to go seek after something that some woman told you and you lost your mind? This is what happened to those guys. Seduced by a pretty woman. Let me tell y'all something. That's not going away. That's not going away. Seduced by a pretty woman. That's that's kind of like it's just part of it. But you got to remember who you are. Who's your leader? In the way they got there, they saw these women, and they was like. In this way, Israel joined in the worship of Baal of Peor, exactly where Balaam and uh, Balak was trying to find and get the scratch of their head. Like, I know I'm doing everything. God, God just ain't changing. Causing the Lord's anger to blaze against his people. Now, they didn't come in there... Uh, against them, all they did was showed up some pretty women and the men that was under the under the hand of God walked out. It happens all the time. Pretty women bring down strong men. The Lord issued the following command to Moses: Seize all the ringleaders. He said, "Get them folk. Get them leaders." Because I want them to be the one to say, I'm going to bring judgment on you because you know better. You know better. The Lord issued the following command to Moses. Get all the ringleaders and execute them before the Lord in broad daylight so his fierce anger will turn away from the people of Israel. He said, if I don't get the leaders, I'm going to have to get the whole congregation. So get those leaders 
who were trapped by what they saw with their eyes and left my word to go after something that ain't about nothing. He said, I'm not going to have it. Why? Because I got a plan and I got to protect what I promised Abraham. Inside of that camp is my seed. And that seed is my son. Get the folk in leadership that decided that a woman going to bring you down. He said, not under my watch. Not under my watch. He said, Moses, get him. Because if you don't get him, I'm going to have to get rid of all y'all because I don't have no problem starting over. The Lord issued the follow the man to Moses, seized all the ringleaders and executed them before the Lord in broad daylight while the sun is shining. So his fierce anger will turn away from the people of Israel. Now y'all supposed to be sacrificing Goats and heifers and bulls. I got this. This right here requires blood of the person that took my word and decided to put it aside and go after something that you know better. So Moses ordered Israel judges. Help me out, judges. To select the ones. Each of you must put to death the men under your authority who have joined in worshiping Baal of Peor. God ain't having it. Got to carry it out. Right in the midst of them executing what God says, get these guys, and they knew better. See, God just don't um, haphazardly gets angry. Let me see how King James said, because I'm reading out of NIV. King James said in the fifth verse, he said, Moses said unto the judges of Israel, slay ye every one, it's men that were joined in Bel Peor. And while they were uh, carrying out God's orders, still today, if leaders, if they are found uh, not operating and influencing or being influenced by ungodly things, that day will come and God will have to judge that thing. Because he has to tell everybody else who's beholding you. If I don't take it from the people that's teaching you, I can't take it. If I can't, if the teachers do it, then you know I'm going to destroy the students. So the best thing to do is get the students and look at what I'm going to do to the teachers so they won't do the same thing that the teachers did. While they were in the process of doing what God said do and doing it, just then, one of the Israelite men brought a Midianite woman into his tent right before the eyes of Moses and all the people as everyone was already crying at the entrance of the tabernacle. All this going on. And one of the renowned leaders walked in and had him one of them pretty women. She must, I don't know, in my imagination, if I was to do this as a movie, this, I, she would be so together. She would have the shoes, the red bottom, her nails done, her hair back. She would just be, this woman had to be somebody pretty in the way I see it. Because this guy, he was so captivated by what he was intending to do. Right there in the midst of where people are crying. Right there in the midst of where people are being executed. He walks in as if to say, I'm not going to their camp to do it. I'm bringing her over here. I, I mean, I just, right now, I just got a comfortable place. I want to be with her. And we coming in and, he, and Moses, so I'm more like, what, 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 what? Moses is almost speechless that you see God, people dying. And you still trying to find a way to sleep with somebody. God said, I'll kill you. This guy was like, I got to have this woman. How in the world could a woman make a man lose his mind like that? You lose your mind just to be in the presence of a woman. And then after it's too late, you look back and say, hey, why did I do that? Because you, you got your eyes off the off what's real. Just then one of the Israelite men brought a midnight woman into this tent right before the eyes of Moses and all the people. Everybody saw it. Everybody saw you walking in with this woman. As everyone weeping at the entrance, them folks are crying. <laughs> Is he crazy? 
When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, Eleazar, grandson of Aaron, the priest saw this, he jumped up and left the assembly and took a spear. He said, no. Nah. And rushed after the man in his, to his tent, into his tent. Phinehas took that, that spear, thrust that spear all the way through the man's body and into the woman's stomach. So the plague against the Israelite was stopped. He said, not under me. Have you ever, and I was listening to uh, other people, and especially in my own life, have you ever had to go through something that you saw was wrong and you said, I'm not getting ready to sit here and allow this to, uh, to happen when I know that it's wrong? I got to speak up. And that's what Phineas did. He said, whatever going on, this is not getting ready to happen. These people hurt. We've heard the heart of God. The passion of God is it don't make sense. We know right from wrong. God just didn't think of this. He taught us. He told us not to participate. And here it is. You just going to walk in here and everybody looking at you as if to say, what is he doing? No, I know what he's doing. And he got up and he went and did something about it. Are you a person like Phineas? Or you just feel like, you just, you just always... You know what? I'm cutting myself loose from everybody. Look, I'm going to tell you something. It's either we going with the word or we ain't going nowhere. It is what God said or I can't just be hoping that, you know, you change. If it has anything to do with me and I know what the word says about that thing, that settles it. That's the word of God. Phineas, son of Eleazar, and grandson of Aaron, the priest has turned my anger away. No, 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 I skipped some. Verse 9. After he went in there and he took that spear and went in through that man and through that woman, this guy probably just couldn't all that wait to get this woman to where he wanted her. But Phineas tracked him down. Man, you ain't even to do this. It happened. That thing must have been sharp. Whoop! I don't know how long it took to get there, but he got the job done. But not before 24,000 people had died. In the, mid, the moment of this going on, 24,000 people had died. God did not, he, he's already trained you to say, if you do this, I have a baby. I got you in my plan to be my example. I'm trying to get to the world. And if you want to waste my time, I... I I already told you. The man that does this shall die. And 24,000 people died. Then the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron, the priest has turned my anger away from the Israelites by being as zealous among them as I was. So I stopped destroying all Israel as I had intended to do in my zealous anger. I was getting ready to wipe some folk out. But when I saw that I had one person who believed me and know that I'm not playing, I backed off. One righteous man. The prayers of the righteous means a lot. When you stand up and stop laughing at jokes that are not funny, if it's, if it's not making God laugh, then it ain't funny. Now tell him, this is what I want you to tell Eliezer, uh, uh, um, Eliezer's son, Phineas. Now tell him that I am making my special covenant of peace with him. Where that guy go, peace gonna follow. In this covenant, I give him, his descendants, a permanent right to the priesthood for the zeal for me, his God. He purified the people of ears and making them right with me. Tell that boy I'm going to use him. And everybody connected to him going to be blessed because of his decision. As a parent, when we do right, our children are automatically in line to fall in line with the word of God. If you are in the word of God, one of my children called me this morning. Woke me up very early. And I had been, you know, I'm always trying to make sure that they always trying to encourage them to stay in the word, stay in the word. And then they go like, mommy, back off. You did your part. Now let us be. And I had to back off. 
but it sounded so good in my ears when that boy came to me this morning and opened up some revelation to me that I had to say, good God, oh, that was awesome. I'm staying with this word. I want people to come in contact with me. When you walk out of here, I want you blessed. You tell that boy, I'm going to bless him and all and everything that come through him. going to be covered. He's always going to have a coveted a piece in his house. Now, the Israelite man, God said, let me identify this guy because I know his name and I know the woman name he slept with. The Israelite man killed with the Midianite woman was named Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of his family from the tribe of Simeon. So Simeon, Simeon did some crazy stuff. So now, passing on down, his son carrying on some foolishness. The woman's name was Cosbe, a Cosby. She was the daughter of Zur, the leader of the Midnight Clan. I told you the woman, like, now oh, y'all know my daddy. Then the Lord said to Moses, I want you to go for what they did. Attack the Midnight attack the Midianites and destroy them. That's verse 17. Get on down here. The words that vex the Midianites and smite them. In other words, annoy them. Let them know I'm not playing. He said they just did something they had no right to do. By the leadership of a king that ought to be I already told you the folk ain't doing nothing to you. So my understanding, I'm basing, basing this on, I do know what the word says in Revelation concerning Balaam. So you turn these pastors, turn the children of Israel into the way of Balaam for that um, unrighteous money. And Balaam wanted this money so much so that he was like, man, you can't be got jobs, all I can say, you know, basically. But we're going to learn that over time giving advice to somebody who is weak in his mind and getting somebody who all, all he want was money for, for his stuff. So some kind of way, Balak and Balaam continued to act, and even though it's like, you know, they made a decision and then God carried out and told us what happened later. After they found the evidence of what happened, it was because of communication between Balaam and Balak and God said, you led these folk down the wrong path. And now I'm getting ready to destroy these folk. Because you had no right to say what I told you not to say. I don't care if it was in a sneaky kind of way. They trick you. God said, the trick shall be tricked. Attack the Midianites and destroy them. Because they assaulted you with deceit. Use them pretty women. Women sell things. Pretty women, some women get up right now and exercise and trying to get toned, trying to look good. And they got death on their minds. And great men fall by them by the dozens. And God is saying, I'm telling you to read this word so you won't get caught up with that. Because they assaulted you with deceit and tricked you into worshiping Baal or poor. Ever since, women, not saying, I'm just telling you it's a special type of one. Not all women have that. There's some women that make men weak. And they fell into this trap, this old trap. And in 2020, they still trap it. A man to go and, and, and put his house note, his car note, his business, just to walk into a place and that woman just basically take her hand and just do something with it or whatever she does. And the next thing you done fill up under that spell and now you got to answer to God. They said more deaths, even though we don't record it in the United States, is uh, people die more over a sexual transmitted disease than anything else. We just don't count it. You either carrying it, knowing that the breakdown of the body over time if you don't stop. It's just something about men are online. I could be talking about the word. And I and I know I'm not 
You know, I am who I am. But these women got something that I ain't never had. <laughs> but I'm just trying to tell you because they assaulted you with deceit. All they needed was a pretty woman. And said, come over here and bow down to my God. Lowercase g. Rubbing in his head. Smelling good. Perfectly fit. Like look good on me. I'm sure that guy that had that woman coming in going into that tent. I bet that girl looks so good until he's I know she fine. Nah, you already know the end of this story. He said, because they assaulted you with deceit and tricked you into worshiping Baal of Peor. And because of Cosby, the daughter of the Midianite leader, who was killed at the time of the plague because of what happened in Peor. He said, uh, take him out. And the reason being, is was what they how they brought the men in and how he brought that woman over. God said, I gave you my word. I will keep it. I'm going to bless you. But we always talk about that part as if to say, in spite of all of what we do wrong, God said, I'm going to bless you. Hollywood, housewives, movie stars, rich people, people of influence, you got to meet the Lord. Just because you got followers doesn't mean that God approves of what you're doing. He has no problem. You said, well, that's, you know, that's very intense. That was a lot. They died. But Jesus said, but I come that you might have life. And I want you to live it to the fullest. But if you don't if you don't hear me, the example of what you ought to be, then woe unto you. Woe means woe. That means you, if you thought this was uh, God's wrath, how about Jesus looking at you like this, and you looking at him gnashing your teeth and mad and cussing him out? Because you can't get out of a place that he told you, you, know, you, you didn't have to go there. But you chose to reject me. And I'm going to make sure I put a petition between you and my father. You will never see him. And he's looking at you and you can't do nothing but sit there for the rest of your life. And, and torment in flames. Because you refused to do what these people did. And you still did it. And God is saying, I'm going to keep my word. However, if you stay in my class and stay in my parameter and stay in my, in my fence, I'll cover you. But if you decide you want to go out, these folk, he said, I'll kill you. So I'd rather be where he is protecting me because the word said he was jealous. And I heard a well-known person say, oh, no, that's not God. Ladies and gentlemen, stick with the word. Don't let people with enough dollar sense to tell you. Because you are, we are jealous. That means we are protective over that that is ours. God is not jealous like, I'm going to get him when he go to sleep. God said, no, I'm going to get you in broad daylight. My jealousy is not because I got, you got something I want and I got to figure out a way to get it. He's, look, I, I want what's mine. I'm jealous over my plan. I'm jealous over the people that I love. And I absolutely love mankind. And if anybody get in my way, and, and, and the sad thing is we do the same thing. If you know that you, 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 um, you, you got a family or you got children, you don't want anybody just handling, misusing, and, and doing something to you, what's yours. That spirit of jealousy, jealousy is not negative. It could be ne it could become negative, but the ne the jealousy that God had is said, I absolutely love what's mine. I want mine. I will protect mine. Even if I have to get rid of somebody to keep mine, then I will get you out of the way because I'm jealous over my people. I'm jealous over my plan. I, I made you. I know who you are. 
So pay attention to me. And know that either way, command ye me. You want to live or you want to die. It's up to you. Get, on God's, get in God's word and learn the love of God. That he would protect you and keep you from the hand of the enemy. Outside enemies or inside. I'm ready to go eat chapter 26 to find out the rest of the story. Have a good day.